of what we're actually going to get paid. It's just put us right back to where we were three years ago. The man known as the Naked Rambler is jailed once again in Winchester. Waiting at this bus stop outside the Royal County Hampshire Hospital after emerging from prison in nothing but boots and socks. And ugly scenes spoil the action at AFC Totten. Things heated up again after the equaliser. Craig Feeney and Rob Norwich grappled on the halfway line, which led to more handbags and choice words. The News of Five with Kate Flyfield. The price of milk may not have changed much in the supermarket, but the price paid to farmers has fallen dramatically. Hampshire farmer Oliver Neagle has told Winnell that in recent months, his profits have slumped. Megan Fisher takes up the story. UK dairy farmers this month face yet another milk price cut. This is just one of the many slashes over the last few months. Militant group Farmers for Action is calling for a standard price to be paid per litre by the processors. Muller Wiseman, Arla, Dairycrest and First Milk have all made milk price cuts this month, with the lowest being put down to 1.9 per pence per litre. Every month from March 2014, prices have plummeted. August 2014 figures show a slump of 2.5% on the same time last year. The reduction is different to price increases seen usually around this time of year. Oliver Neagle, a dairy farmer from Botley, has lost around 7 pence per litre and faces losses of up to £8,000 a year. We need some security and guarantee you know, of what we're actually going to get paid. It's just put us right back to where we were three years ago with milk prices, people giving up, getting out. And like I said before, the, the cost, the cost of the, the reinvestment is, is so big. Dairy Crest said in a statement, we are very disappointed to have to make this further price announcement to our farmers. The global market has not improved. We have therefore had to reflect this in our November milk prices. This is a challenging time for the dairy sector and all of us who work in it. Oliver and his cows hope that the squeeze won't last too long. Megan Fisher, Winchester News Online. A man from Eastleigh known as the Naked Rambler has been jailed for a further two and a half years after breaking an ASBO which banned him from appearing naked in public. Stephen Goff, aged 55, will now be spending nearly a decade in prison after committing a total of 48 offences. Hattie Waldron reports. Stephen Goff, known as the Naked Rambler, has been jailed for two and a half years, meaning he will spend a total of nearly ten years in prison for appearing naked in public. It was at these gates where Stephen Goff was arrested in April this year, just minutes after being released from a previous 16-month sentence. Goff was in view of people waiting at this bus stop outside the Royal County Hampshire Hospital after emerging from prison in nothing but boots and socks. Goff was offered a tracksuit but refused it and was soon arrested again. Winchester Crown Court heard that Goff refused to comply with his ASBO because he thought it was unreasonable. Judge Jane Milliot told the court that Goff was going round in circles in an endless cycle of prison sentences and that he'd continue committing offences until the end of his natural life. Hattie Waldron, Winchester News Online. Surveys suggest that most hate crimes against lesbian, gay and bisexuals are never reported. Now Hampshire police are trying to convince victims of hate crimes that it's worth getting in touch and speaking to their specialist officers. Our crime reporter Brooke Perriam has this report. Every day people suffer abuse and discrimination because they are lesbian, gay, bisexual or transgender. A YouGov survey showed that 1 in 16 people are getting harassed or attacked because of their sexual preferences. One in six have experienced homophobic hate crime in the last three years, and two-thirds of these people did not report it. Hampshire Police have been recruiting and promoting lesbian and gay liaison officers, better known as LAGLOs, to tackle these crimes. Personally, I think hate crime is probably the lowest form of crime you can commit. Um, you are essentially targeting an individual because of their belief, their way of life, something that they sometimes have absolutely no control over. Police take these matters incredibly seriously. They're brought up to the very highest levels when it's reported. Uh, they go right up to the senior officer ranks. Hate crime attacks aren't always physical. Words alone can affect just as much. 
well I've experienced it myself so um, but I, to be honest I haven't really come, like, come forward about it but like it, it is it is around it is around um, and yeah I just it's it's not very nice <laughs> yeah. Brooke Perriam Winchester News Online with the Lib Dem conference underway this week, our political correspondent Alex Delaney examines whether students have forgiven the party for breaking their promise not to raise tuition fees. Nick Clegg will be hoping that the Liberal Democrats can regain the support of students, who were previously one of the party's biggest demographics, ahead of the general election in May. When Winnell surveyed students on the University of Winchester campus earlier in the year, the results showed that Labour were firm favourites, but that the Lib Dems still held over 20% of the vote. A survey conducted this week suggests the Conservatives have now overtaken Labour, while the Lib Dems fall to less than 10% of the vote. The number of students who are undecided has shot up, now topping our poll. We can see that the Lib Dem result from our survey closely mirrors that of a national poll released by YouGov this morning. Our survey also showed an increase in support for the Green Party, with more students now saying they'll be voting for them than for the Lib Dems. Meanwhile, in the marginal seat of Eastleigh, currently held by the Lib Dems, UKIP leader Nigel Farage is claiming that his party is now in front. Lauren Clark reports. In general elections, Nigel Farage claimed that UKIP had been very successful in recent polls. Eastleigh was a key example of this, showing the growth of votes from 2010, then to the by-election, and finally to recent polls. It's a fresh voice for Britain, and all the people who've never had anybody they felt could represent them in terms of voting at all, I believe that's what UKIP is now offering. And it's got nothing to do whether people were, you know, ex-Labour, ex-Tory, ex-Lib Dem. You know, it's not, we're not right, we're not right wing, we're not left wing, we're not red, we're not blue, we're joint, we're purple, and that's the future. But this poll isn't as convincing for other party candidates. To say you're leading the poll when just a few months ago they didn't get win a single seat is a bit disingenuous, I think. When it comes right down to it, a poll means nothing. It's what the people say when they go into that ballot box. That's democracy, and I totally respect that. That's Lauren Clark there. Midwives at Hampshire County Hospital are striking next Monday. The action comes in response to the government's refusal to pay midwives a 1% pay increase. This is the first time midwives in England have ever taken industrial action. A group of Hampshire firemen have just cycled 650 miles in aid of the firefighters' charity stopping off to collect donations on the way. They have raised over £6,500 to help sick and injured colleagues. Tourism in Winchester has hit an all-time high with visitors exceeding 5.5 million in 2013. This compares with lower figures elsewhere in the country. It's estimated that tourism is worth £100 million a year to Winchester's economy. Laura Harding has the latest. Tourism in Winchester has hit an all-time high with visitors exceeding 5.5 million last year. These trends are a great success given the 7% drop in tourism across the rest of the country. The City Council and Tourism South East cited a 42% increase of tourists over five years. As this data shows, tourism contributes massively to Winchester's economy, specifically £100 million over the past five years and over 5,000 jobs. Laura Harding, Winchester News AFC Totten have made an impressive start to the season following their relegation to the Southern and Western Division 1. They were looking to continue a run of three straight league wins when they faced Taunton Town on Saturday, but the game was marred by some unfortunate scenes on the pitch. R Rodri Cannon was at the Testwood Stadium. Despite relegation, confidence is flowing at AFC Totten. The Stags had the best of the early chances against Taunton as Zach Mooland headed wide from a corner. Moments later, Nathaniel Sherborne saw his effort flash across the face of goal. Taunton took control of the game and the lead through Steve Murray. But the visitors were reduced to 10 men early in the second half. Players collided, tempers flared and pushing and shoving ensued as Jamie Short was shown a straight red card for what was deemed a dangerous tackle on Taunton Sherborne.
Totten's one-man advantage eventually paid dividends as Ryan Flukes headed in an in-swinging free kick to draw Steve Riley's men level. Things heated up again after the equaliser. Craig Feeney and Rob Norrish grappled on the halfway line, which led to more handbags and choice words. The ten men of Totten rallied and in stoppage time they stole all three points. Jamie Price headed home a Ben Kirk delivery to give the Peacocks the win. Midweek wins for both sides mean they are still in the hunt for promotion. Rodri Cannon, Winchester News Online, Totten. Basingstoke Town has undergone some major changes since gaining sponsorship from Soccer AM. Winnell has been keeping up with the latest developments and our reporter Mark Betts took a look at the changes behind the scenes. Basingstoke Town Football Club are playing under a new stadium name after a deal was made with the Sky Sports programme Soccer AM. The partnership has already seen attendances boost by up to 66% this season with more fans expected to show as they climb the division table. Basingstoke believes this deal is a step in the right direction with plans for a new stadium well underway. Yeah, the stadium's a little bit dilapidated at the moment. Um, I think um, it does restrict us in certain ways. Um, to have a fantastic new venue, um, I think it will just push, be able to push the club in the right direction. The stadium will be built on a new site between London Road and Old Common Road. It will also see an increase in capacity to 5,000 people, with the ability to increase this to 7,500 if the club progresses. And the Dragons took on Whitehawk last night in the Conference South. A win for the home side would see them move to the top of the table, with a game in hand over their closest rivals. Ross Perkins has more. A win for Basingstoke would see them go top, but Danny Mills of Whitehawks had the game's first real chance. Soon after, the home side took control, but Manny Williams was guilty of heading over when he really should have scored. There was no mistake from Chris Flood though. Perfectly picked out by left-back Tom Bird, Flood found himself unmarked in the box and in turn found the back of the net with a well-directed header. It's Flood's eighth goal of the season in just 12 games for Basingstoke. Liam Envermarum then tested the gloves of Whitehawks' Craig Ross at his near post before missing a gilt-edged chance to double the home side's lead after beating the offside trap. Ross stood firm to deny him with a strong stop with his legs. There was a scare for Basingstoke as Lee Hill's Maisie run from left back and powerful shot just cleared Stuart Moore's crossbar. The goalkeeper relieved to see it fly over. Basingstoke then had another chance to extend their lead, but David Ray's header was cleared off the line. In the second half, Saar Kabba's purposeful run ended with his shot smacking against the outside of the post, a whisker away from an equaliser. But in the end, Basingstoke saw the match out to go top of the Conference South with 24 points. Ross Perkins, Winchester News Online. Fleet Town Girls and Ladies FC have been working with the Hampshire FA to secure funding for female involvement in youth football. The side have been given £6,000 to develop younger sides within the county. Rachel Gunter reports. A £6,000 Grow the Game grant from the Football Foundation has been awarded to Fleet Town Ladies and Girls. We have to recruit 20 new players each year um, and then it will be used for... Um, new coaches to go on coaching courses and first aid courses um, and some of it's going to go towards the training facilities for them as well. The grant will allow the club to create four new girls teams at the under nine age group over the next three years, meaning that the club can develop at a grassroots level. Girls football I think is in a bit of a decline um, so starting at the under nine age groups um, means we can carry them on through the rest of the club up until the ladies. There are a couple of players who play for the ladies now that used to be in the very first under nines team that started at Fleet um, and they're now also coaching the youngsters at Fleet as well so yeah we want them to come all the way through and then stay at the club and then help out with the youngsters again as well. 
As well as four new girls teams, the £6,000 also means that six new coaches can be recruited and trained to FA Level 1 standards, including a goalkeeping coach. Two of the current coaches can be trained to FA Level 2 standards and one will be joining the Youth Module Scheme. I'm Rachel Gunter for Winchester News Online in Aldershot. Don't forget to check out Winnell's Features this week for poetry, music interviews and your weekly fashion fix. Our Features editor Laura Allen takes a peek at what's on offer this week. Our review team hit the Theatre Royal in Winchester today to catch the latest performance by the actors of Dionysus. And Winchester played host to its first ever poetry festival at the weekend where Stephen Sleminski interviewed some of the country's leading poets. And finally, our entertainment correspondent Zena Alobedi went along to Winchester's comedy festival and interviewed the likes of Radio 1 presenter Tom Deacon and character Brian Gittins from the popular TV show Derek, produced by Ricky Gervais. Check out winall.co.uk forward slash features for the full performances, interviews and more. And finally, a baby donkey has been born at a Hampshire farm. The farm has launched a poll on social media to find a name. Nadija Parker has more. It's a new day and there's a new arrival at Manor Farm and Country Park. A donkey whose name was chosen from an online poll. Um, so we got the public to um, pick different names that they quite liked and then we picked our six favourite and got them to vote on Facebook and then we just picked the winning name this morning and the winning name seemed to be Isaac and he's a very attentive little boy at the moment and loves hugs and cuddles from members of the public. Baby Isaac has put in a day's work being cute and cuddly for all the guests that have come for the big name reveal. Nadija Parker, Winchester News Online, Winchester. That's all from us for this week, but for more award-winning news, sports and features, head to winall.co.uk. Goodbye.